Hello everybody, good morning and welcome to the United Stand. It is looking more and more likely that Harry Maguire and David De Gea are going to be staying at Manchester United next season. Now, to a lot of you, that is not what you're going to want to hear. Maybe to some of you, it is what you're going to want to hear. We're going to touch on a little bit of Mason Mount news as well as Declan Rice. Obviously, Zlatan Ibrahimovic announced also that he has retired from professional football. Obviously, uh, not really a Manchester United legend, but he, he had an all right Manchester United career and a huge legend in football nonetheless. But, uh, I mean, to, to start off the show, Harry Maguire staying at Manchester United next season is a hideous idea, in all honesty. And we're leading off The Athletic. We'll go straight, smash straight into it. Uh, as I say, from The Athletic, a source with understanding of Harry Maguire's situation at Manchester United says his intention is to stay at Old Trafford. However, Gareth Southgate's comments about his future in the England team could bring said issues to the forefront. Uh, I mean, to me, that automatically sounds like he's quite happy and content being uh, fourth slash fifth choice centre-back should a new centre-back actually be brought in. And it does lead me to think of the comparison. You compare him to Lindelof, and Lindelof has had a much better season this season than Harry Maguire has. Genuinely, uh, what game was it? The Fulham game where Maguire and Lindelof started together. You can, I mean, Harry Maguire didn't play bad, but you can see... Whoever plays with Harry Maguire, he makes them look worse. He slows the game down. Harry Maguire, like the Chuckle Brothers, they pass back and forward to each other. It's pointless. There's, there's no point in doing it. Uh, good morning, everyone, by the way. Good morning, everyone. Welcome in to the show. Um, we're, we're, we're touching on Harry Maguire. You guys can get your comments in. We'll smash a poll straight away, actually, in terms of whether you guys... And I do, I do know... Uh, what this poll is going to look like in, in terms of outcome results, but I want to see how much of a landslide it is. And we're just going to go poll of, should Harry Maguire be at Manchester United next season? Something along those lines. Should Manchester United still have Harry Maguire next season? Um, so yeah, Har Harry Maguire being a Manchester United player next season, in all honesty, doesn't shock me. It doesn't, because I, uh, as much as he does, yes, needs to leave Manchester United, he could quite easily go and play for Everton, um, you know, one of those mid to, to lower league, uh, lower table teams in the Premier League. He just isn't suited to how Manchester United are trying to play and move forward under Eric Ten Hag. That, that's as plain as simple as that. You know, we've got much better options ahead of him. We've got a left back who is better at centre back than he is in this current system. Luke Shaw is a better player at centre back under Ten Hag than Harry Maguire is, 100%. There's no, there's no denying that. And I think Eric Ten... Well, I know Eric Ten Hag knows that. You don't you don't really need to know, you know, much about him. Poll in the chat, guys. Um, should Harry Maguire be at United next season? And 93%, over 1,000 votes already, chaps and chapettes. Absolutely ridiculous. Wasting 200 grand a week. I know his defending is terrifying, says Triple M. Man United, sh Man United should get Cucurella. He's great. He definitely isn't great. Have I missed any super chats? There is one here from Robert McCormack. Who would, uh, who would give up United captain and wages for Everton? I, I know what you're saying, Robert McCormack. And I do understand what you're saying. Why would you give that up? Uh, and this does lead on to the tweet, uh, the, kind of the back end of the tweet in terms of Gareth Southgate's comments, the England comments, etc., um, and, I mean, you talk about giving up captain. Him being captain isn't his choice, right? He, he can lose the captaincy, and I very much think that he will lose the captaincy. Eric Ten Hag, most probably, I'm going to actually say like 97%, will be giving it to Bruno Fernandes next season. Uh, that, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a given. Um, and in terms, of, in terms of wages, right, I'm sure that if he was to go to... Uh, I'm just using Everton as a... As a uh, you know, you're throwing that club out there. I'm sure that Everton would pay him a significant amount of money, right? Because he would probably help them stay up in the Premier League again next season. They've got a new season, a uh, new uh, stadium being built. They they need to stay in the Premier League at all costs, and their ownership situation is a little bit strange at the minute. I'm not going to pretend to know all about that. I'd rather Lindelof stay since he's better and more ambitious. Maguire wants to stay because he's not ambitious about his career, poor character. Yes, JT, appreciate the super chat, my friend. Um, but yeah, I mean, that is kind of what I was saying in the sense of 
you, you compare the two, Lindelof has had a much better season because he's proven that when he is partnered with um, Martinez or, or Varane or even Shaw, that he can and does play very well. He's, a, he's just a better football player at centre-back than Harry Maguire is. And for me, if, I mean, one of them, one of them will go. 99%, what does the poll say? 92% do definitely think that Maguire needs to leave Manchester United. I'll be interested. And and the whether you've done it by mistake, but the 8% of people who have voted yes, please do get your comments in as to why you think Harry Maguire should. Maybe it's just rival fans trolling, you know, because we do have a super chat here from Zane Mayassi. I haven't seen you in a while, my friend. How are you doing? Have fun with, with Maguire, Mount and Kane. We are getting Caicedo, Rice and Gundogan. Um... Arteta revelation continues. Uh, I mean, you know, if you if you go and get Caicedo, Rice, and Gundogan, then fair fair play in all honesty to you because you know Caicedo, Rice. I mean, I wouldn't want Gundogan, brilliant, brilliant player. Um, but I mean, you'd never come to to Man, Man United from Man City anyway. But Caicedo is unbelievable. Declan Rice. There is some news on Declan Rice. Zane, if you want to stay, which links to Manchester United, which you might not might not want to hear about. Um, Eight percent are Chelsea fans praying there is no swap. I, I mean, look, the the fact as well that Harry Maguire said I don't need to prove anything. Uh, it's so it's ridiculous. It's stupid. He is. He, he just doesn't. He doesn't help himself out, does he? He really doesn't help himself out. People rinse me for Gundogan. All right, Gundogan. We all have different pronunciations of players, OK? Um, United won't win a title with either Bruno or Rashford, says Kimber. Now, I know someone who will agree with you on that, and that is Big Don Ricky. Uh, I'm pretty sure that those words have actually come out of his mouth in terms of Manchester United will not win. Actually, I even think Usman said that we won't win a title with Bruno playing at 10, I want to say. Uh, the Rashford, I, I don't think he said it about Rashford, but Ricky, I'm pretty sure, said along those lines, we won't win a title with those two players, which is not a very good um, or very highly rated opinion, but you've got to respect everyone's opinion nonetheless. But back to Maguire. Um, so, yeah, the, the Gareth Southgate comments. No, I was touching on, on uh, Lindelof, wasn't I? So, I think Lindelof could quite easily go and play for an Inter Milan. I think Inter Milan were interested in him in January. Um, I don't know if they inquired about him or not, how concrete that was. But the fact that Lindelof does have some ambition, you know, he's a, a mainstay in that Sweden team. And if, I just feel like Harry Maguire is quite, quite content. Yes, he wants. To, he, he obviously wants to play, but he, he has to know deep down that Varane is ahead of him when fit, 100%. Uh, Var uh, Martinez is ahead of him. Even unfit, he's ahead of him. And if one of those aren't fit, then Luke Shaw plays ahead of him. And then you've also you've got Lindelof as well. Like it, it, it really, really doesn't make sense to me why you wouldn't. You know, this, Harry Maguire's not short of money. Let, let's be honest. I, I know he's on two hundred grand a week, but he's been at Manchester United for a few years now. He doesn't. You know, what's the difference between one hundred and fifty to two hundred grand a week to these type of players? Do you know what I mean? Like, it, to me, it doesn't. It doesn't make sense. Like GGMU says, even Cassie at centre back. I mean, Casemiro has played at centre back for Real Madrid. Can he do it for Manchester United? I mean, again, would you put him ahead of, of Harry Maguire? Probably be a little bit reckless, obviously, giving away a penalty. But uh, for me, for me, in all honesty, Harry Maguire shouldn't be a Manchester United player next season. And there was also reports of people that kind of know the market, know that he's valued at around 40 million, which would mean that we'd recoup half of what we have paid for him. And in all honesty, that is generous. I think that you could get 30 max. 30, yeah, I mean, maybe 30 to 40 is pretty is a pretty OK estimation in terms of evaluation for him. Who's actually going to pay that? I mean, could he go back? Um, I mean, he couldn't go back to Leicester. They've just been relegated. They're not going to pay that money for him. But I, I just do think, you know, a, a, a lower down the table Premier League team, he could quite easily do that. And then he's going to start and then he's going to have better chance of being in the England starting 11. Because the latter bit, which comes on, is, you know, Gareth Southgate's comments, which led me to kind of research what the comments were. 
because I hadn't seen Gareth Southgate say anything. And he did actually say that Harry Maguire's lack of playing time for Manchester United makes it difficult to guarantee that he will start games for England. Hallelujah. Like, duh. If you're not, I, I genuinely don't care how, how if, you, if you're not starting games, and when you are starting games, you're dropping below six out of 10 performances, how you can then go and start for England. And, it, and it's a little bit like, you know, I was baffled at Aaron Ramsdale has only played three games for England. Jordan Pickford's the number one, right? And I, I just do think, like, yeah, you know, Harry Maguire plays... Br uh, uh, the excuse of Harry Maguire plays brilliantly for England. I have a day off. Like, the guy's had an awful season. Like, uh, and then you expect him to go and be amazing for England. Oh, it's a better environment, all this. Like, no, like, there has got to be an element of how well you play from... Uh, the start of not even the season, but the the from the world the end of the World Cup, obviously for your club, and then to picking the team when Gareth Southgate does this, your form in that period has to come into it. The playing time you have, how well you play in that time. I, I mean, there's 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 no there's no point in him being in that England squad, and there's no point in Calvin Phillips being there either. The memes going around on Twitter of him lifting the flipping FA Cup. We can touch on the FA Cup a little bit because I haven't had my say on that a little bit later in the show. But what, what, what's what's the point in those two being there? Like genuinely, it is just it is just favoritism, and I think the 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 pin is slowly dropping for Southgate in the sense of he, he you know how long can Southgate get away with actually playing Harry Maguire for England? when he doesn't even play for Manchester United. It, it is it's so stupid. Renate gifted five memberships. Thank you, my friend. Jack Kane says, uh, Morning, Agent Mark. Any news on DMing Rasmus? I saw that, actually. Obviously, I'm not Mark. Um, I'm guessing you do know who Mark is. But I did see that he obviously follows Mark. I think it was on Instagram, wasn't it? Which is, which is funny. And he said, leave it with me. So... Um, yeah, well, I mean, maybe, maybe we'll get the inside scoop in terms of who uh, and not who, but when slash possible, possibly when he could be moving to Manchester United. Spencer says, do a poll on David. Uh, YouTube doesn't allow to write surname for some reason. Should he go? Mark was too afraid to do it. All right. Well, let's do it then. I, I mean, <laughs> wait, producer Ryan, is De Gea banned? <laughs> Can no one write De Gea in the chat? Is that? Is that? Oh, <laughs> yeah. So the yeah, the, Spencer. The reason you can't you can't write De Gea is the word's been banned for for previous reasons. I think a lot of people were getting stick on the channel about certain opinions. But slowly, people are. I do see a, a switch in opinion, which is fine. Obviously, you can change your opinion. Slowly, people are being won over to the fact that David De Gea is no longer good enough to be ma to be number one at Manchester United. So we'll do a poll. We'll end this one. It's nearly on five thousand votes and ninety one percent. Here we go. We're just about to go. Oh, wait, we ended it on 4,999 votes. But anyway, 91% think that Harry Maguire um, should not be at Manchester United next season. Obviously, um, <laughs> everyone's in the chat like De Gea, Gadea. Uh, it's good, the concrete. It's a good one. It's a good one. De Gea without a space works. You can write De Gea without a space. Um, but yeah, let's get a poll going of... Manchester United, or should David De Gea stay at Manchester United next season? Something along those lines. I, I don't think Mark would have been too scared to do it. I don't. I don't think that's the right terminology. Um, geez, <laughs> Dave. Dave stays. The sprayer. The wall. Beth probably banned it. No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't have been Beth. It wouldn't have been Beth. She wouldn't. Have, she wouldn't have banned it. Um, Dave Bench. Those eight percent should not support the club. That's obviously to do with. The Harry Maguire one. Should David De Gea stay at United next season? There we go. Get your votes in. I'm going for my vote. Wow. Straight off the bat, a lot of people are saying yes. I'm going to say that might get a little bit closer than you think. I don't know if there's a lot of trolls in the chat, a lot of rival fans. But we'll quickly, before we move on to a little bit about De Gea, we'll quickly round off the point on Harry Maguire. And the fact is that he intends to stay at Manchester United and realistically... Does that does that mean anything? If Eric Ten Hag wants him gone, and if there are buyers interested in him, then for me, um, 
he, he's a goner, right? We, if we can get the, the 35, 40 million for him, he's a goner. But we have to make sure that Lindelof is kept and then probably another centre-half is bought in as well. Um, but Harry Maguire at Manchester United, his, his time at Manchester United is, is, is slowly, slowly dwindling away. But David De Gea, we can move on to, which fits in with the poll, over 1,500 votes. Wow, it's not actually as close. I thought this was going to be closer, you know. 70%. It's slowly, slowly, uh, no, is creeping its way up. Um, but 71% but are saying yes, that David De Gea should stay at Manchester United next season. I'm guessing the person that put that chat in about, um, you know, the fact that, that that Mark was was scared to to put it in, which I don't think is the case. You know, I'm guessing that's not what you thought the outcome was going to be. I think most agree Dave needs replaced. The issue is when, based on budget and priorities, says Michael Neal. Yes, I do agree with that. Uh, I, I feel like I feel like David David De Gea's time at Manchester United is slow. Like the fire, the candle is slowly burning out, and for me, he's just. He's just reaching, reaching that tether. And look, certain players, this doesn't just go for David De Gea and goalkeepers, but certain players just don't work well under certain systems. And in order to keep up with, with modern play and modern football, you have to, you have to adapt, you have to, you have to evolve. And that, that is part of the process. You know, David De Gea has been one of... Uh, the best servants for Manchester United in the time that I have watched Manchester United since I can since I can remember right like vividly remember Manchester United. So, yeah, and he's been what Player of the Year four or five times, Team of the Year, Team of the Season, however many times. Incredible player, but you know he's got he's got to be replaced at some point. It does just come down to at what point you replace him and how you replace him. Do you replace him straight away, get rid of him, get a brand new number one, whether it's Costa, whether it's Raya, whoever it is, and that's, that's your new number one? Or do you do you kind of filter in a new younger goalkeeper to learn from De Gea for a season and then take over the reins? There's there's two different kind of outcomes that you can, you can look at it. Tracy says, morning, he should go. Uh, Maguire is not a United player or uh, never a captain. Bruno is captain for us. Check Google. There is news on the sale. Thanks. Okay, I'm not. Um, is there? Uh, Google probably isn't the best. The best place to to look it up. Um, if there is a if there is news, I'm sure I'm sure or breaking news, Ryan. I'm sure Ryan will, will let me know. But we'll go with the the De Gea stuff, which is from Chris Wheeler. Did obviously come out um, late last night, and it is that he he is signing on the verge of signing a new deal, and we have been hearing about this for a couple of months now. We, we've kind of known that David De Gea is going to sign a new contract at Manchester United. Apparently terms have been agreed, but is yet to be signed off by Man United. And Saturday's game at Wembley could still have consequences. De Gea knows his starting position isn't guaranteed. I think, I think that's pretty, I think that's pretty obvious. You know, we saw for the first time, uh, when was it, a week ago or a few days ago, that Ten Hag came out and said that De Gea knows that he's not my not guaranteed to be the number one next season. I think that I think that ultimately Manchester a new goalkeeper needs to be brought in. Or and you know there, a lot of people are calling for old Matty Kovar who, who just won the league with Sparta Prague. I think it was. You know that's a lot of responsibility. Do you know what I mean for 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 a young player, a young goalkeeper to come in and, and take the reins off De Gea. Whether he's the one to to come in and learn under that year because we don't have that budget. I, it really is so difficult to understand. I am in the boat of a new goalkeeper needs to be brought into Manchester United. But then again, I do understand there are probably other higher priority positions, a striker, a midfielder, then probably a goalkeeper for me. You know, it is very difficult and we're yet to, to fully understand the situation. But if De Gea is going to sign a contract, I, I don't know what the terms are going to be, but he's what on a, currently at this moment, he's on about 375 grand a week. Even if you lower that to two hundred grand a week, are you paying two hundred grand a week for a, a bench player? Is that is that possible? I mean, of course it's possible. Manchester, it's Manchester United we're talking about, it. but is it something that is it something that's going to actually 
actually happen? Are Manchester United going to want to do that? I mean, who knows? It might be a lot lower than 200 grand a week. You, you might get into 150, the 100 mark. I, I, I don't see that happening personally. Maybe it happens because David De Gea knows slowly that he still wants to be a part of Manchester United, but, but he knows that his time is slowly coming to an end. Maybe he wants to retire at Manchester United. Who knows? Hodgie says, evening from Australia. What are your thoughts on Alex Scott from Bristol City and Mateus Nunes from Wolves would be great along with Mount? Um, so Alex Scott, I don't know much about him in all honesty, but I have heard a lot about him just through kind of football manager and playing FIFA. I'll be honest with you. Um, he was, he's been a, a huge name. He obviously had quite a good game when Bristol City played Manchester City. I think that was in the FA Cup. Um, and he's just a young, quite a young talent, isn't he, that a lot of clubs are going to be interested in. Um, that's pretty much all I know about him. I know a lot more about Mateus Nunes and the fact that under um, not Lopetegui, but the previous Wolves manager, it might even be under Lopetegui actually as well, but basically he's not being... He, Mateus Nunes' numbers at his previous club, I think it was Sporting Lisbon, were outrageous in terms of just midfield statistics. And he would be probably a good signing, but I don't know if Manchester United are, are, are kind of entertaining that or or even, even interested, in all honesty. SB says, 17 times he gave the ball away under zero pressure on Saturday. No team can build from that, and it costs us time and time again. I mean, yeah, I don't... I, realistically, I don't, I don't want to go... I don't want to go too deep into David De Gea and, and that situation. I have just seen a comment, t uh, Tim saying, 100K, come on, Charlie, you're having a mare, mate. I mean, it's just a suggestion in all honesty. I'm just throwing ideas out there in terms of, I did actually just say that I don't think he would go down to 100 grand a week. So, um, waffle. But um, the fact that, yes, SB is addressing here 17 times. Did he actually give the ball away 17 times with zero pressures? I mean, a lot of that will obviously be the fact that he is kicking long. And I do imagine, the, the thing is, which we've got to remember, guys, here is I do imagine that is a, that is a, a, a not a tactic, because it's not a tactic, is it? But Ten Hag probably would have said to De Gea, kick long today, please. That, that, uh, and but that will be because he doesn't, he doesn't want to play out from the back, because he doesn't therefore trust De Gea with his, with his feet, etc., but I imagine that, you know, let's say eight of those were in the first half. If he didn't want De Gea to do that, he would have said at half time, right, don't do that. If something goes wrong, it's on me. That's, that's just how I kind of look at it. But the fact is, 17 times if he is giving the ball away, you know, that is because he, he's not good enough with his feet. Seb says, gold glove winner, great shot stopper, not great with feet or keeper who's Better, oh, okay, so you want, you're comparing either a Golden Glove winner and a great shot stopper but not great with their feet or a keeper who's better with feet and can't save a thing, young keeper to work alongside him. I mean, Seb, you're going, you're going very drastic, one extreme to the other because, you know, just because someone, a goalkeeper might be good with their feet doesn't mean that they're not going to be able to use these, the old mittens. So, for me you can have a goalkeeper that's good at both. Well, why not? Uh, I, I mean, look, whoever the new goalkeeper is, whenever it is that they come in, they will make mistakes, just as a new centre-back won't make mistakes, just as a new striker won't score every single goal. Harry Kane, if he joins Manchester United, he will make mistakes, which will lead to this, this brigade of Twitter trolls, the people who, not even trolls, just the people who were against a new goalkeeper. Harry Kane coming to Manchester United, whoever it may be, they're against it. They'll have their little five minutes of saying, this is why we didn't want this player. They, you know, this is why De Gea would have saved that. Like Martial would have scored that. When realistically, you know, you, whoever it is, you do need to get behind the player until until you you know fully you know what they're what they're about realistically as much as i can sit here and say harry maguire is not a manchester united player when he is playing for manchester united on that pitch i want him to do do best i don't want him to mess up i don't want him to cost us goals cost us penalties whatever it may be i don't want him to get sent off right whoever is playing in that manchester united shirt at that current moment in time on the pitch i want them to do great i wish them all the best i want i want manchester united to win it isn't about individuals. It's about a team game. It's about Manchester United winning trophies, winning games, three points, FA Cups, Champions Leagues, Premier Leagues, whatever, Carabao Cup this season, whatever it may be. 
Um, so I think it, it, it's unfair, Seb, to say, you know, you go from a Golden Glove winner um, in De Gea and a, and a great shot stopper, which, you know, he is a good shot stopper. I wouldn't actually go as far as saying he's a great shot stopper this season. I, I feel like... I feel like the thing is, you know, what Roy Keane says, he's just doing his job. It, like, you know, that is what ultimately what a postman doesn't get praised for delivering letters. It literally is that cliche uh, saying of David De Gea, the goalkeeper is there to stop the ball going in the back of the net. And now this new adaptation is to now be a part of the, 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 the other 10 players on the pitch. That, that is now what adaptation looks like. And a load of people have said in the past, Pep Guardiola has come, came in and he went through goalkeepers and defenders like, uh, I don't even know, like fresh milk. Does that make sense? I don't know. I, I drink a lot of milk. But this, you know, I, I, Arteta did it. He, he, he shipped Leno off, didn't he? Uh, and, and look, a lot of people might not have been happy. A lot of people said that Ramsdale, pay, what did they pay? 35 million for... Ramsdale, who's been relegated twice in two seasons or three seasons, whatever it was, was ridiculous. And a lot of people criticise Ramsdale, was, you know, has made mistakes. Mistakes are inevitable. They're always going to happen in football, regardless of what position you are. It's just limiting those mistakes and knowing that whatever mistakes you're going to make, you know, you need to, you need to, you need to just... Um, how do I best put this? You need to know what your weaknesses, your strengths and weaknesses are. And ultimately, I just don't think De Gea suits Ten Hag's, Ten Hag's system, in, in all honesty. In the long term, long term, I don't. Depending on what the budget is, will depend on, on whether a new goalkeeper gets, gets brought in, in, in all honesty. Uh, Drown says, David De Gea lost the ball 12 times, contested or not, on Saturday. Check your facts, people. Lies. Okay, I mean, there's a big difference between 17 and 12, but 12 times... Um, it's still it's still a significant amount, right? Yeah, uh, it's still a significant amount. Hodgie says, if we get priced out of getting Kane and Osserman, which two strikers would you like for us to get this summer? Personally, I'd like uh, Ramos and Hoyland. I'm guessing you mean Goncalo Ramos. I, I mean, ultimately, this... I, I literally don't know what to believe. It's so hard. The Osserman talk seems to have died down a little bit. It very much was Osserman heavy. And then it kind of switched to Kane, you know, what we're seeing now. And now you're almost seeing it switch again to big-time Hoyland because you've seen figures going around of Daniel Levy wanting $200 million for Kane, and that is just absolutely absurd. Who knows what Daniel Levy truly, truly wants for, for, for Harry Kane, in all honesty. Uh, but no, I, I mean, I, I don't know too much about Goncalo Ramos. Um, I know that when Darwin Nunes was there... Goncalo Ramos was very much the provider. And since Nunes has left, that, Nune, uh, that Goncalo Ramos has taken up the reins of the goal scorer. Can he be the type of number nine Eric Ten Hag wants? I think regardless of who the striker is that gets brought in, another one needs to be brought in. Whoever it is, whether you go and get Kane, let's say Hoyland needs to be brought in. Whoever, if Hoyland gets brought in, another one needs to be brought in underneath that as well. We need two strikers. Stev says, great work, Charlie. Keep it up, brother. Appreciate that, my friend. SB says, another fact, save rate 60% uh, from 70% over season. Not sure what you mean by that, SB. Um, Alexander says, Bristol City is my local team. Haven't seen, uh, have seen him a few times this season and Alex Scott is the real deal. Um, Drown and also uh, gifted um, a, a donation. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Stick says he needs to be replaced, but not right away. If you swap De Gea with Edison, City would still win the title. We have bigger problems. Um, I, I genuinely, what, how I kind of look at this whole De Gea situation is, you, I, I don't think people, and, and this is fine because I don't think. Um, like, I'm not saying this, I don't, I don't want this to come across from like a, a high and mighty point of view because uh, I think I'm part of this as well. I don't think people genuinely realise and understand the true impact of, I'm not, I don't want to put it on De Gea, but just having a goalkeeper that is very good with their feet and can be utilised in breaking the lines, in being press resistant, all, you know, all these different things, it, it is very, very underrated. 
And there is a reason that the best managers in the world, your peps, etc., have gone out there and got their keeper, Edison, and can play with their feet. But I, I, I think that I think that the bud the budget is the big thing because uh, Mark, I saw a clip of on Twitter of Mark saying, you know, if the budget was three hundred million, he still wouldn't have a goalkeeper. Oh, still wouldn't go and get a Costa, not a goalkeeper, but Costa. Uh, but if it was three fifty, then you're looking at it because he, you know, he thinks that there's a lot of other positions that do need fixing, adding to, you know, depth being brought in. And I think, I, I think that you know. A goalkeeper needs to be brought in sooner or later. And if there is a better... Well, there definitely is better goalkeepers out there. So uh, improvement needs to be made. Uh, I did just see a comment there. Sheldon addressing an older point. I'm guessing you're at an older point of the video. But saying that's not fair because strikers get praised for scoring, which is their job. Uh, I, I mean, exactly. Um, that is that is actually a big thing that Courtois was saying, right? Look, that's why you hardly ever see defenders and goalkeepers winning huge awards like the Ballon d'Or or... Um, the FIFA World Global, I don't know what awards there are these days, but you, you know it's always the go it's always the attackers or the midfielders, right, that win the Ballon d'Or, win these big awards because they score the goals, which probably isn't very fair, is it? Because you could you could win every game, you, you know, say say you went invincible for a season but won every game one nil and drew nil nil, you've kept a clean sheet in every game. That striker is still probably getting praised more than the defenders when realistically that, that shouldn't really be the case. Stev says, what do you think of the news that Eric Ten Hag is looking to sign a left winger? What does that mean for possible striker signings? In all honesty, a left winger, I, I, I'm try, I try and look at it. I try and take myself out of the situation and look at it from like a, a weird point of view. And I don't really understand, um, in all honesty. Uh, look at the poll. 68% saying David De Gea should stay at United next season. OK, we'll, we'll end that poll there then because I don't think that's going to stop. That's over 5,000 votes. What we'll go with the next poll, because we've still got some, t some time to talk about De Gea before we move on, is should De Gea be Manchester United's number one next season? It's quite clear that a lot of you guys are, are wanting De Gea to stay. I guess I just want to find out in what capacity and we'll just do like quick fire poll, like one or two minutes because that one was up for nearly 20 odd minutes. So... Quick fire poll. But to go back to your super chat, my friend, uh, I, I, a left winger, we, we haven't, I, I don't know if that, does that initiate the possible sale of, of Jaden Sancho? Um, you know, we've even got, we've even got Ahmad, who, who's out on loan, who, who plays on the wing. Yes, I know he usually plays, plays on that right-hand side, but what you want from your wingers and your attackers now is fluidity and, and then being able to play in multiple positions, that being kind of left and right. You know, uh, I, I, it doesn't really make sense, but maybe we'll find out later on down the line. So we'll see. This vote might be a little bit closer now in terms of what we're expecting. Um, straight away off the bat, four years a lot. It's a lot tighter. A lot of people saying De Gea is still good enough. We need a whole new team, <laughs> says Zizifo. I mean, we don't need a whole new team. There's some. There's some very good players in there, isn't there? Lissandro Martinez, Casemiro. Um, I mean, a lot, a lot of people on Twitter have been going in on Marcus Rashford. There's that clip of um, him not challenging, I think it was Rodri or someone for a header. And I just do think that, you know, things get taken out of context. And I'm not saying that necessarily gets taken out of context, but that's what, like a one second clip from a 90 minute match or a one second clip from a um, 61 game season or whatever we've played where Marcus Rashford has been our top goal scorer, scored... 30 goals in all competitions, you know, and, and now people are crying over him not jumping for a header. As, as, as bad as that is in a derby, you know, you've, 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 got to, you've got to remember kind of what he has delivered this season along with that. Yes, there are elements to his game which he definitely, definitely needs to improve on um, in terms of just fight, that, uh, that fight, that challenge, you know... Certain things that footballers do, and I always used to do it because when I was growing up, I was never, I was never tall. I'm not that tall now, but I was never tall. So whenever I used to jump for a header, I was just, I wasn't jumping to even try and win the header. You just jump for the sake of jumping to try and put someone, someone else off. Maybe you know, put someone under pressure. That you know, that is just, just jump. Make yourself look like you're doing something. That that is, that is, um, that is, you know, what 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 I do do get from that. 
Um, Rashi was bad for a few months now. Um, yeah, he hasn't had. He, he's tailed off, hasn't he? But he had. He did have. He did have high high uh, expectations, I guess. Post post World Cup, he was absolutely incredible, wasn't he? So, um, how are you, six foot tall, athletic, athletic brother? But you can't jump. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I did. I did just say when I was younger. Um, I, I wasn't always six foot. I didn't come out of the womb six foot tall. That isn't that isn't how it works. I'm afraid to let you down. Um, but we'll. What was the poll saying? Actually, we'll have a quick gander. Fifty-six percent to forty-four percent. Fifty-six percent saying yes to De Gea being the number one next season. So I mean, we'll end that there. It's not going to change too much, is it? Most of the people in the chat are wanting De Gea to be number one next season. Um, uh, yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. In all honesty, I respect everyone's opinions. I think. Um, I think that you know. Fair enough. It is ultimately the the best thing for that. But a little bit on Mason Mount. Oh God, Mason. I was I got mixed up then with Mason Money Mount. That's what I was trying to say. But I think. Wait, I've just seen a comment here. Let me get this right. Just because Rashford has been great for us all season, we shouldn't expect more from him or hold him accountable. No, that is not what I'm saying. Stuff punks. That is not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that con you know certain things need contextualization. Is that a right word? Or they need context, I think, ultimately. Um, that, that's, that's just kind of how I look at, it, look at it. And that's my that's my opinion. Yes, you should always be held accountable, 100%. Um, and as I said before, there are things that he needs to be improving on. So, yes, we should be expecting more from him, especially as he has tailed off towards the end of the season. But, you know, he, he has also uh, been very good for us this season in comparison to last season. Glenny Boy says, with goalkeeper, defenders and midfielder, we can reduce the cost of incomings by selling. The problem is strikers, as we have nobody in that position. I mean, we definitely do need to sell players. There's no word of a lie there. 100% Manchester United need to sell. But we'll move on to Mason Mount. And again, this is from The Athletic. Mason Mount staying at Manchester... Uh, sorry, Mason Mount staying at Chelsea is very unlikely at this stage with the club needing to sell players to comply with the financial fair play rules. Chelsea wants 70 million, but obviously Man United are reluctant to spend that much on him. I mean... I'm, I'm warming round to the idea of Mason Mount at Manchester United, but the fee, the reported, what was it, 50, 55 million is putting me off a little bit. But I think... I, I don't know why necessarily, because he is young... He, he has been very good for Chelsea. It'll be interesting to see what the wages w would be. But I, I, I'm coming round to the thought of Mason Mount to Manchester United, you know. 70 million is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. But, and I did see that Mark said about the 90% the club with, with Mason Mount now being in that. And obviously there was that um, clip from the F1. Can't remember the guy's name, in all honesty. I'm not, I'm not an, F an F1 fan. Uh, Martin Brundle, uh, there we go, that's his name, off the top of the dome. No, producer Ryan, let me know, big F1 fan. But he obviously did say and ha had a bit of a joke, didn't he? I think Mount was with Chilwell and, and, and um, Martin Brundle went up to Mount and said, oh, Chilwell's saying you're going to Manchester United. He had a little giggle and a laugh. And obviously he's not going to say yes, he's not going to say no, he's not going to say anything. Just says, you know, I'm here to, to enjoy enjoy the race, blah de blah de blah But... What do we think? Mason Mount to Manchester United. I'm, I'm, I'm very torn. I'm very, very torn. What are you guys saying? Very torn. On form, he's good in England. Also, paying that English player tax. Uh, uh, De Jong, De Jong was 70, 80 million last year. It, it's so, it's so, it's so difficult because, I mean, the English player tax is genuinely a thing, but. I think I don't know if you can haggle Chelsea here. If, if the fact of the tweet saying, you know, they need to comply with FFP rules. Obviously, they're going to want to maximise the money that they're getting in. And also, if they do sell Mount, he is an academy product that they will receive full profit on. Just like if we were to sell McTominay, full profit. But how I then do look at it is Mason Mount is an upgrade on probably both. No, not probably. Definitely McTominay and Fred. If you sell McTominay for the reported 30, 35, 40 million to Newcastle, you know, you're looking at paying maybe 10, 20 million realistic. I know that's not really how it works, but, but you know, you're not then paying as much. And Manchester United do need to sell some players, reportedly 30 million for Henderson, all that as well. I mean, look, 
Manchester United, <laughs> start your own 90% club, Charlie. Can't do worse than Mark Lowe. No, no, we're, we're not gonna, I'm not gonna put myself out there like that. Paying over 40 million for Mount is stupid. Uh, I think, I think uh, it's so difficult because the market is so weird. Like, because people will go, oh, if we've paid, you know, Anthony's great. Talk about Harry Kane here, but a Anthony's great. You know, we paid 80 million for Anthony. Then, you know, Harry Kane's definitely worth 100. But it's not, re they're not really comparable because realistically how it works is you're only worth what someone is willing to pay for you because a club can put a price on your head. You know, Manchester United putting 40 million on Maguire's head, allegedly. But if West Ham came along and went, no, we actually value him at, at 28 million, they might go over that a little bit because they, they really desperately want him, but they're not going to want to spend over the odds for a player that they don't value at, at the same price that the, the selling club does. So, yeah, it, it's not... It's not um, it's not comparable. Kane is old. That's why he's worth less. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I, you know, that's that's what I was that's what I was kind of uh, alluding to there. Mount is worse than Fred. Wow. I mean, that that's a poll in itself, actually. Well, what's the poll we got currently going? In the, I mean, yeah, seventy five percent. See, you know what's weird? Not weird. It's not weird. But it, it's. I, I love the fact that people people are slowly coming round to the fact that. Because literally all I saw when Mount was first kind of, there was talk of him being moved to Manchester United. Every single person I saw was no, 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 no. Now I'm slowly seeing, I'm slowly seeing that people are, are warming around to the fact of Mason Mount to Manchester United. I'm not sure why that is, why that is happening, but we'll end that one. And I want to know, I want to know who you would prefer, Mount or Fred? I, I was so interested to know what this will end up being. Peter says, we can't let players go and not proper replacement. Agreed, Peter. But for me, Mount is a better replacement than both McTominay and Fred. I wouldn't get rid of both of them to bring in one. And again, Mount, I repeat, Mount cannot be our only midfield signing. There needs to be probably maybe even two more midfielders. That that probably isn't isn't um, isn't going to happen. In all honesty, but you know what 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 we're going to do about it. We we need we need quite a few positions. We do need quite a few positions. Kimber says, "Who? Uh, sorry, would we get more out of Anthony Anthony Sancho or Garnacho and Rashford with Mount at ten? I mean, look, Garnacho is absolutely incredible, and you saw the impact that he had when he came on against against Manchester City. Um, but Anthony is going to be a starter for Manchester United, one hundred percent, and so is Rashford. I honestly see a world in which Sancho will have one more season at Manchester United, unless he unless he absolutely you know has a has a Marcus Rashford season of this season, absolutely lights it up, reignites his his career. Um, and proves that that he should be staying. I, I feel like next next season could be his last season at Manchester United, and we we might be looking to to sell him on again, losing money on uh, on a player, possibly go back to Dortmund or something like that. I'm not too sure, but in all honesty, I love Sancho, man. I, I think he is such. He, he's almost like the old street footballer. I just don't. Something's missing. He, he needs to. Something needs to be brought out in him. But the poll saying nearly a thousand votes and eighty four percent would prefer Mason Mount over Fred. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I didn't think that was a rogue opinion. In all honesty, I didn't. I didn't think it was a rogue opinion. I, I think the the fact that that you know, I mean, Mount's won a Champions League. Let, you know, he and he was he was quite an important part in that Champions League squad um, at Chelsea as well. So, you know, I, I think I think that I think that that Mount to Manchester United is, is, is quite a good idea depending on the wages and depending on the fee. That's what I'll say. That is what I'll say. Uh, Garnacho over Sancho. Yeah, not many people will disagree with you there. Cassie, Mount, Bruno, midfield. I mean, look, just even if we bring in Mount, 
we, I think it's quite clear, as brilliant as Ericsson has been, the, the legs aren't there, he's not combative, he's not, his work rate isn't there, and he, get, he does get found out later on in games. That's why he has been. And since his injury, since he's come back, he hasn't been the same. So midfielders definitely need to be brought in. Mount plus Caicedo slash Rice. I, I mean, if we had to go all out for a midfielder, I'd absolutely go and get Caicedo. I think he's, he is a joke. Joke of a midfielder. Unbelievable. Uh, Tiddy Brown. Tiddy, uh, Tidy Brown, God, says, New poll. Mount or Ericsson? Ericsson won't make a challenge. Has been poor since back from his injury. Players run past him for fun. Too old. Time to go. I mean, Matt, Ericsson, Ericsson is good at, good at what he does, in all honesty, and probably can be utilised in certain games. But uh, since, uh, again, I said it, didn't I? Since he's come back from his injury, he has been a little bit poor. Players do run past him, and I don't think I, I think too old time to go is not is not fair. Um, and he has a, he has had a season here. Uh, I think he's got one year left, maybe two years left. I'm not sure what 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 his his deal is, but we'll see. We'll ultimately see. But 85 percent would prefer Mount over Fred. Yeah, it's it's not it's not looking good for for old Freddie boy. Maybe he'll move away. Uh, Adhi says the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper talks are nonsense, triggered by Beth. Stop it. If anyone want to talk about playing from the back, I will explain, for I've played the game. <laughs> I can't, you know, I can never tell if some of these chats are just like well sarcastic and like like that. But um, Adhi, appreciate the super chat nonetheless, my friend. I mean, the goalkeeper talks were definitely not just triggered by Beth, let's be honest. I mean, maybe on this channel... She was one of the first ones to obviously say, you know, about, about De Gea's deficiencies, let's say. But, you know, it, it's quite clear that within within the media, and I'm sure that Ten Hag hasn't been watching this channel and going, you know what, Beth's on to something here. De Gea isn't very good with his feet, so we'll look at getting a new keeper. No, that, that isn't that isn't quite how it how it would have it would have been been happening. But ultimately, Mason Mount to Manchester United. It's looking more and more likely by the day. Ultimately, I thought it was waffle. I genuinely thought it was proper waffle, but it is genuinely looking likely. Uh, that does lead me lead me on to the next tweet, again from The Athletic, uh, that Man United want to sign two players early in the window to ensure, ensure that they're available for pre-season and Mason Mount is one of the players. Uh, I, I mean, we didn't do this last season at all, did we? At all. One bit. We didn't do it. Uh, I think the only player to go on tour was Malassia. Am I right in saying that? I, I, I think so. Was he the... Yeah, Malassia was the only player to go on tour. So you, you then think we signed Ericsson, who was free, by the way. We, had, we didn't even have a club to, to get him off, and we struggled with that. We had Casemiro and Anthony to come in, and they were all... You know, I remember Casemiro in, 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 watch, watching the game in the stands, um, you know, these were all late arrivals. And what you want is you want your players to come in ASAP, literally ASAP, in pre-season training, literally whatever it is. You need to learn Ten Hag's system because you want to hit the ground running. We don't want the same start that we had last season. Yes, it was a successful season overall, finishing top four, third. But you look at getting an extra six points from those two games, I don't, it wouldn't have obviously changed the, the, where we kind of end up in the, in the, in the table in the grand scheme of things, but you know you're not you're not you don't want to get battered four nil in the in, well, you know in your first two games, and then obviously the the loss to Brighton as well. It's it's you you want to if we want if Manchester United want to be challenging for the 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 big time trophies, then we need to be winning games early on in the season. You can't realistically, especially with Man City around, you cannot be losing many games in this Premier League. Peter says what I was saying was look. Uh, look how long it took to replace Schmeichel, Keane, etc. We also have to stop overpaying players' wages. Uh, can't move them. I, I mean, we definitely, definitely, definitely need to uh, stop overpaying for players and overpaying their wages. 100%. That's a given. Um, I uh, and uh, with regards to you know how long it took to replace Schmeichel and Keane, I. I I don't think I think that's a that's a that's a good thing for those players, right? Like you're not always gonna get you're not always gonna get 
a, a Roy Keane type player. You know, Casemiro has been our first proper number six type player for 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 blooming ages, ages, and and a season, two seasons is you know obviously it's been longer than that, but that is a long period in football, um, and to to kind of go without you know, a, a, a proper number six and have a system in place is a long time. Manchester United fans have been calling out for a, a defensive midfielder for so long. I, You know, it feels genuinely like we've been with McTominay and Fred for like eight years. Obviously, it's not been that time, but genuinely, that is how long it feels. Way too long. Uh, we'll end the poll there, though. Over 2,000 votes, 85% um, saying that they would prefer Mason Mount over Fred, which is... A landslide, in all honesty. Sean says, Ericsson not good enough uh, against top opposition. Too slow and physically not there. Rodri had a career day in the FA final. I mean, yeah, it, it, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't play very well. Adhi says, here we go. This is his, his reply. If I were a goalkeeper, who should I pass? Our CDM wingbacks are closed down. Passing to centre-back will trigger pressing from the midfield. I should pass long and hope front players win it. But unfortunately, strikers are crap. Um, I mean, Adhi, um, you've, just, you, you've, you've kind of laid out one scenario, right? Because, yes, you are right that probably that will happen one, one time a game, maybe two times a game where De Gea might get the ball and he might not have any options and have to kick long. But not every time. That you know that that is uh, a team will not trigger a press every single time a defender uh, a goalkeeper passes to the centre back. That isn't what happens. Um, the wing backs aren't always closed down, and I, 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 you know, ultimately it comes down to the fact of if De Gea was confident, and I think that you know Martinez and Varane and etc. and Shaw have proven that they are confident in receiving the ball under pressure. So if De Gea was confident passing the ball out and, and look okay say for instance you get a goalkeeper that can pass out from the back say this scenario was to happen that passing to a center back might trigger a, trigger the press or um the cdm and the wing backs are closed down so maybe you you pass to the center backs which triggers their press the center back passes back to De Gea and he plays it over the press into the wingers or you know De Gea can't do that let's be honest De Gea, De Gea can't do that um confidently and competently he might be able to do it once in a in a in five games and people will people will love it and people will go look day can do it day can do it uh, fair enough he can do it um he can do it one time in five games but you know sally says here teams who pass out regularly find a way look at brighton man brighton are absolutely ridiculous at playing out from the back absolute joke and they've got no disrespect, Jason Steele in goal. They've got a back four of what? Lewis Dunk, uh, Estupinan. I think uh, Gross has been playing at right back. You know, I mean, you know, Robert McCormack says here, has Addy never watched Man City? Yeah, it, it, it is as if like other teams don't play out from the back, isn't it? But Brighton, Brighton are unbelievable at playing out from the back. The, there's a reason that Pep Guardiola has said that the Zerbi has got Brighton playing in the first phase, the best football in Europe. It, maybe even the world, he said. I don't know. But I, I, I think that I think that, you know, it's 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 something that Manchester United need to improve on this this whole playing out from the back. And I know that Eric Ten Hag is going to want to work on it one hundred percent and players will be replaced if they're not good enough. That that is ultimately what, what it comes down to. I, I think um AK says he said the world. I mean, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> look, look. Manchester United need to improve at playing out from the back. And whether that's bringing in a new goalkeeper, bringing in a new centre-back who can do it better, I don't know what it's going to be. De Gea needs to go sooner or later, whether that's next year, the year after, or this season, you know, the, the going into next season. Uh, I think, I think Addy, what you're saying there, uh, as much as I appreciate, I appreciate the Super Chat, um, I don't think you can say that De Gea kicking long uh, for the front players to win it Unfortunately, the strikers are crap. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't really see the correlation, in, in all honesty, because um, it, it, you know it's not really, not really a, a fair, a fair argument because other teams play out from the back 
and you know they're, they're more than capable at, at doing so. Andy says, as much as I like Sancho, I'm getting Kagawa and Mickey vibes. Doesn't have that sparkle he had at Dortmund. Not too sure why. Yeah, I, in all honesty, I'm not too sure, mate. I'm not too sure, Andy. It, it's, a, it's a tough one because Sancho is unbelievable. And I remember, obviously, Mkhitaryan and Kagawa at Manchester United. They had good spells. Obviously, Mkhitaryan scored that unbelievable scorpion kick, which actually was offside, wasn't it? Uh, but no VAR back then. Um, but Nishant says Sancho is too afraid. Sancho has checked out. Sancho will just turn into the next Dali Ali. I really do. I really, I really don't think he will. I know. I don't. Th I think that's unfair to say he won't turn out like the next Dali Ali. Dali Ali had an unbelievable career, and Sir Alex Ferguson actually wanted Jose Mourinho to sign him for Manchester United, didn't he? But I think, I think he, um, I think he has a future. It's just whether he's willing to, whether he's willing to, you know, bring that future out. Whether he's willing to actually dig deep and and, and proper indulge into Eric Ten Hag's way of playing football. That that's ultimately that's ultimately what it what it comes down to for me. Uh we'll, we'll end the show though on the last bit of news because we haven't got long on Declan Rice and that again is from the Athletic. Man United are keeping tabs on the Declan Rice situation but the fee said to be around 100 million and Eric Ten Hag's priorities lying elsewhere mean a turnaround is required for a formal approach. Um, obviously, Zayn Mayassi, famous Zayn, obviously puts loves a, a big Arsenal fan, put a super chat in earlier on, didn't he, about Declan Rice moving to Arsenal. It's going to cost an absolute fortune. There's a lot of Declan Rice to buy Munich talks going around at the minute, actually, isn't there? Thomas Tuchel being a huge fan of Declan Rice. Ultimately, I don't see this signing happening. I don't see Manchester United spending £100 million on Declan Rice as much as I'd love him at Manchester United. Again, uh, I think that him joining United would be or would bring a different side to his game out of him as well. I feel like, you know, he's playing obviously as a six and he, he is getting forward as more, sometimes more of an eight. But I think when you get got Casemiro there, he can fill in a, a, obviously the Casemiro role, but he can be that box to box midfielder and get involved in assists and goals. But ultimately, I just don't see this signing happening. I don't see Manchester United being competent enough or willing to spend that amount of money when the budget is unknown. And Manchester United do need to sign two strikers, probably, you know, two more midfielders uh, and then maybe a goalkeeper. I, I don't know what you guys think. Uh, I really, I'm really intrigued to see. Uh, but ultimately, it's, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a no from me. I just don't see Declan Rice happening. It, it's a shame. Harold, thank you for the super chat, my friend. Your first super chat. Addy says, I was a striker and used to play up front. Every time I have the ball pass from the back, I have to fight and win and pass it to the teammate. Boy plays football. Um, I mean, <laughs> I don't, you know, I, I don't, I don't genuinely know what to say. I again, like, I appreciate your super chat, mate. Um, but I'm sure that a lot of people, a lot of people in in this uh, chat have played football in the past. Um, maybe some to of a, a professional level, whatever age that would have been. I mean, I, I, I'm a striker, was a striker, um, and do play up front every time. Every time I have the ball pass from the back, I have to fight and win it and pass it to a teammate. Yes, correct. You are right in that. That's, that is what you should be doing. Not quite sure, because we were talking about, obviously, passing out from the back in De Gea, etc. Um not quite sure what that has to do with that, but you you are right that you should fight and win um, um, to to win the ball. That is that is correct, and I, I guess maybe you're alluding to the Rashford clip of him not fighting and winning it back. Um, you know, <laughs> uh, Charlie to United. Here we go. Should have got Charlie instead of Weghorst. Oi, genuinely, you know what's funny? I genuinely think that if if I played for United for the, the same amount of time that Weghorst what has, I would have scored more goals than him. 100%. 100%. How many has he scored? Two? One? He, I, did, he score, I don't, did, he, did he score in the Premier League? He didn't, did he? Or did he? I can't remember. But I, I, I genuinely think I would have scored more goals than Weghorst for Manchester United this season. Mark O says, Maguire is eighth choice centre-back. Why keep him? I mean, your guess is as good as mine. Um... But maybe it comes down to what, what selling priorities we have because you've got to remember there's players that aren't even at the club that need to go. Your Baez, your Tellez, your Henderson, 
Then you've got your players that are at the club, your Brandon Williams. Um, obviously, Jones and Twanzebi are, are going to be leaving on a free or are leaving on a free. Um, Alicia says here, who does Ricky want uh, United to sign? You know what? We should ask him that. I don't, has anyone has anyone asked him recently who Manchester United should go and sign? I'd be very interested. I'd be... Oh, God, I've just heard him. He wants Welbeck. I, I, I genuinely don't believe that he believes that. Seriously, he can't do. He can't do. What in, in what world? In what world would you want would you want Welbeck? I'm not saying he's a bad player, um, but you know I, I don't I don't see it I don't see it. But guys, um, I'll make sure to 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 ask Ricky on um, a forum at some point in the future, or or I'm sure that um, Adam will get him get him on at some point for Adam talks sometime in the future. Harold, cheers for the super chat, but probably wants Ashley Young back. Uh, I mean, look, Matic, yeah. There's there's a few players which I'm sure that he would welcome back. Dan James, even, with open arms to Manchester United. But, yeah, I, I think I think that Ricky has some... Well, he definitely has ball knowledge, 100%. And I reckon he has some hidden, like, Serie A gems. Because he does watch a lot of the Serie A, actually. For old small Dini out there and, and Darmian, etc. But, guys, we'll end the show there. Really appreciate it. Hope you have a very good rest of your day. Obviously, this summer is going to be huge for Manchester United and the United stand. We're going to be, we're going to have what three, four videos a day. Transfer news coming out your neck. So please do stick around. Subscribe if you aren't already. Leave a like on your way out, and I'll catch you in the next one.